What's happening? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. I am back from my break, you know, my first vacation in two years and trust me, I needed it. So, you know, I'm a little browner from the Hawaii sun and you know what? I'm ready to get right back into it and with the tech season just kind of winding down, we are starting to look forward to 2022 for Apple. But first, a quick thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Protect yourself online today with NordVPN. Now, if 2021 was the year of the Mac, well, 2022 is going to be the year of the Mac part due. And according to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, Apple is working on five new Macs for launch in 2022. Now, the Macs that have been rumored and that we expect to see, well, first, a new high-end iMac that could possibly be called the new iMac Pro with a larger display than the current M1 iMac's 24-inch screen with an updated design. Plus, you got M1 Pro and M1 Max chip options with a mini LED display, and we could see it in the first half of next year. Now, the second Mac would be a significant revamp to the MacBook Air, one that a lot of you are waiting for with an all-new design that gets rid of that wedge blade design and now adopts that flat rectangular look of the new macbook pros but thinner it won't have all the same ports you're expecting two usb-c in there as well and rumors of a white bezel with a potential white notch have been floated for this all new macbook air in 2022 in fact some rumblings claim that apple might simplify its product line name and get rid of the air moniker as a whole so maybe we could return to a macbook and macbook pro lineup I think that also makes a lot more sense. Now the third Mac, an update to the new Mac mini with a higher end version and a revamped design that could look like these renders from John Prosser and renders by Ian with two more Thunderbolt ports and the magnetic power cable seen from the iMacs. We're also awaiting the revamp to an all new Mac Pro featuring Apple Silicon and the M1 Max chips for the first time with the most power that we have seen in a Mac so far with even higher GPU options. So. Will the cheese grater get smaller? We are expecting a smaller form factor using Apple's new chips, but there could be a Mac Pro option that still uses Intel's latest chipset. So you have all that. What would the fifth new Mac in 2022 be? Well, German claims that a new entry level MacBook Pro is coming in 2022, one that has the ports, but not all the power that most people just don't need from the current pros. So those are really the five Macs to look out for in 2022. I did a song this year that you might have just seen. Um, it's not the return of the Mac, but man, the Mac is back. So I'm also still waiting to get my personal MacBook Pro. What, it's what mid-December maybe? But it should be coming by the end of this month. Now, we also know we're expecting the usual updates across the Apple product line, but Taiwanese research firm Trendforce claims that we'll see the third generation iPhone SE in the first quarter of 2022. And that's coming soon, as in by March, if true. Trendforce reports the new iPhone SE will be Apple's mid-range smartphone, but will bring 5G and a faster A15 chip for the 2022 model. It will still retain its 4.7 inch display. It'll still have the Touch ID button with the thicker bezels. And this is the iPhone that might make the most sense for someone like my mom who needs a new one, but you know she's really comfortable with the Touch ID home button that's still not going away. Now, there was no refresh in 2021 and there really didn't need to be. So 2022 is the target for the iPhone SE. Now, there's also been rumors that Apple is also working on an even larger iPhone SE, but reports say that that device won't be ready until maybe 2023 or even later. Now, you also know that I went for the Apple Watch Series 7 right here. I upgraded it for my Series 4. So I don't know what could make the watch more interesting in 2022. Well, reports say that we should expect to see a complete revamp to the Apple Watch lineup that includes an update to the Apple Watch SE. And even more intriguing, this long rumored Apple Watch with a rugged design for active users and sports athletes. Now, this new Apple Watch may feature a more ruggedized case that's even more resistant to scratches, dents, and falls. And look, we all saw the rumors of the flat body and flat edged Apple Watch design that never came true last year. So then it makes us wonder, could that have been the more rugged Apple Watch that never came to be that we'll see in 2022? You know that the new SE model will likely get a processor boost, maybe include a new sensor for health and could even adapt the slightly larger display, but I'm not expecting any you know groundbreaking big changes there. The SE is still the Apple Watch that I tell everyone to consider first before looking at any other model. Uh, but you know, Apple Watch rugged, flat design, it, you know, maybe that that's where we're going. All right, now I would say though that the Apple product that I upgraded to in 2021, 
that has left me maybe the most underwhelmed this year has to be the iPad Pro. And it's not bad. It's not bad at all, but I'm still not using any of its power to its fullest. I mean, look, there was a lot of hype and a lot of hope with an M1 chip inside. If you were an iPad Pro owner before, I think the biggest change was that the new mini LED display, it looks great. But beyond that, does it make enough to make me feel like it was worth the upgrade? Like I don't use my iPad Pro any differently than I did before. So we're expecting iPad updates across the line next year for the entry level, the iPad Air and the iPad Pro. The latest report claims that the 2022 iPad Pro will feature a new design and wireless charging for the very first time. You know, Apple's been testing a glass back instead of an aluminum body to allow for the potential wireless charging capabilities. And I know when I say that, there's a lot of you that are saying, I do not need wireless charging on my iPad Pro. And you're probably right. You probably don't. I probably don't. But what this is leaning into is Apple's grand plans of enabling Apple's own devices to wirelessly charge each other one day. You know, they still haven't given up on their own air power wireless charging mat. Reports just came out about that. And that product, it was first announced in 2017, remember, with the iPhone 8 and 10, but then it was eventually canceled in March of 2019. Since then, Apple's released MagSafe charging for its iPhones, and Bloomberg reports Apple is still working on some form of wireless charging for short and even long distance wireless charging devices with the hopes of this future where all of its major devices can charge each other. We've seen patents that have even shown this idea off, you know, charging a phone on the back of an iPad and an Apple Watch on the back of an iPhone, or even using parts of the hand rest of the MacBook Pro or the back of it to charge devices as well. And then let's not forget the Apple product that could really shake things up in 2022. We're talking Apple glasses, right? Rumors have pointed to it coming in the fourth quarter of 2022 with mass production starting in the second quarter of next year. In German's latest Power On newsletter, he claims that Apple's rumored augmented reality and virtual reality headset should first really focus on gaming, media consumption, and communication. So combined reports claim it will be a lightweight design and the headset itself will still include two main processors. There's gonna be two 4K micro LED displays inside with 15 optical modules. You get eye tracking and Wi-Fi 6E connectivity, which will likely work with a future Wi-Fi 6E enabled iPhone to transmit data at faster speeds to the glasses to deliver all that information. German also claims gaming should be a strong focus, but look, if it's just iOS games out of the gates, I mean, that can't compete with what we see on an Oculus Quest 2 today with all those developers and everything they're giving it. Media consumption maybe could be another focus. You know, you pair them with Apple's own spatial audio compatible headsets. That could be intriguing. And then communication for Animojis or a VR FaceTime-like experience, according to German, which to me doesn't make sense when actual FaceTime without wearing glasses is already a much better experience. So it's just going to be interesting to see how Apple positions their first ever AR VR headset. I don't think gaming is going to be the killer feature for Apple glasses unless they really take it seriously with developers. And we know historically how gaming and developers have gone with Apple. But instead, I think it just really needs to truly enhance how we live our lives today. And it's really the information and interactivity that we can get with augmented reality from Apple. So, you know, this is all intriguing. We all have our own ideas. You have your ideas. I mean, I'd love to see them put in the comments, but we're still looking for a company to show us a compelling reason that makes it fit in our daily lives. Because this is their first generation glasses that are coming out in. I remember how unpolished the Apple Watch was, but over a few years, it eventually evolved into one of Apple's best devices ever. And you know, I'm sure they're hoping the same for their own Apple reality experience. And I'm just excited to see how this all comes together. All right, before we wrap up, big thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. If you wanna protect yourself online, you've got to use NordVPN. So many of us are streaming video every day and NordVPN unlocks content on your favorite apps like Netflix, YouTube, and your favorite sites from their over 5,100 servers in 60 countries to watch region exclusive content. NordVPN supports up to six different devices. There's double data encryption for increased anonymity that shields your online activity. And it's compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, and Android. There's even an extension for your Chrome browser. Now it's been confirmed by speed test, NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there. You can connect easily with one click or enable auto connect for zero click protection. It's been recommended as the best VPN by multiple sites and it was an editor's choice earning all the green checks on PC Mag. 
If you're a gamer and a game isn't available in your country, you can change your virtual location to buy the games you want. You can game securely and avoid DDoS attacks that significantly slow down your connection and block malware ridden websites. So for the holiday season, go to nordvpn.com slash Tong to get a two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. Protect yourself online today with NordVPN. Okay, everybody. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you see, you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell. Ding! To get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Take care, everybody, and be safe, everyone. We'll see you on the next video. Peace and love.